Hello, this is Jake Light, Gaming Lawyer at your service. I'm here once again with Great Ace Attorney to play through the level ending game. It's, how long has it been? How many episodes? It's almost 30 episodes now. I think, yeah. Then we are only halfway through, or more than halfway through. But we'll see. We'll see how long this trial goes on. So, as we left off, we were ambushed by this little girl. So, let's see what she has to say. So, I snuck inside the carriage before. Um, she's not. Uh, oh, yeah, I forgot. She's not Cockney. Uh, she's Cockney. She's not Irish. So Irish is ang uh, so Cockney is angry. So I stuck inside the carriage before they look they hook up the horses just like always. But it was um, but she has to be she is a girl. But it was but it was a right a waste of time. I got nothing to show for me troubles that night. I'll tell ya, you can't see a blind thing in that hiding place. It's a pitch in there. Then after a while, I hear this loud bang. Nearly jump out my skin, I did. Oh no, what was that? I accidentally pressed. Uh, oh no, I can't see what she said. Okay, never mind. It's because of that, this swell found me. It did help me get away, mine. <laughs> All six members of the jury had decided the defendant was innocent. For one brief shining moment, yes. It's clear that they are still very unsure. We could just find some conclusive piece of evidence among this new testimony. I'm sure we will clinch the verdict with we want. Yes, I think you're right. And I have this niggling feel, niggling feeling. Is that a word? Something's bothering me, but I just can't quite put my finger on it. So I, so I snuck inside the carriage before they hook up the horses, just like always. Uh, press. So, you were already in the omnibus before it even set off on its run. Well, yeah, I mean, what's the point of spending a joy to make a feel bad, eh? That's one my idea, isn't it? You know? <laughs> I suppose she means there's no point spending money to make money. It actually makes sense. Council, may I remind you that this girl is petty is a petty tiff. Kindly refrain from entertaining her tenants. Well, that does clear up the little mystery affairs and all. For paying passengers at by Pentapis, making a twenty to reach the cap and testify it. Until one little skip grace ready for free. The rat can't go a dry driver always goes for some grub before his last round, see? That's when I slip into the carriage and get myself in under seat. Nice and easy, right? But your hiding place is a storage compartment. Full of equipment for the coach, you know? Yeah, there's brushes and buckets and whatnot in there. Sure, I always shut all that out and cram it in a corner somewhere. No one ever seems to boil much. And yet, according to the report filed by the police officer who first arrived at the scene, the compartment was full of such paraphernalia. Well, I don't know nothing, nothing about that. Like I said, I move all of that stuff out so I could hide under the seat. That's all I can tell ya. Tell ya. 
It seems we've reached the end of that line of inquiry. Continue. But it was a wild waste of time. I got nothing to show me from troubles that night. Yes. A waste of time. Why is that? Well, most nights I'm on me own in the gutter, mate. At least some old time. <laughs> I'm not even sure if anyone is gonna watch it. Is it gonna understand what I just said? I I beg your pardon. Did you say God permit? Oh yeah. Well, that's not what my kind call it. You'd say the omnibus, I suppose. The point is, any normal run, the carriage ain't got no one in it for a while. And that's when you come out of your hiding place and get away. That's it. Only that night. This code was set on me seat from the start. And he didn't botch the old way. The old way. There. Not one inch. I was totally stuck. Do you mean to tell us that you were present in a carriage for the duration? You were under the seat the entire time while events unfolded in the enclosed cabin. Yeah, right, mister? To be sure, to be sure. I was as shocked as anyone. You don't expect to leave the cushion you've been sat on and find a child now, do ya? Hmm, so this Miss Lestrade couldn't possibly be the culprit then. I'll tell ya, you can't see a blind thing in that hiding place. Spitch in there, spitch in there. So you couldn't see out in the cabin at all. Not a job. Those days I pushed the cushion up with me eh, and look out the crack, the crack. Then, then I can have, then I can have a butchers, butchers, at all I'm gonna fiddle. I thought you were a pickpocket, not a butcher. I mean, I can have a look. The seat I get on ain't as plush as the other one, say. So most of the time, the passing the passengers plant themselves up opposite. But for some reason that night, this here Irishman spent the whole journey right over me head. And for that reason, you weren't able to push the cushion up to pick out. I see. Truth, truth is, I ain't too happy in small dark places. Feels too much like being thrown in the clank. It's the only place to hide in the in them carriages, so it's Optin's choice. Why doesn't she just stick, just stick to picking people's pockets and open them? I'd say there's some reason that she's not letting on, judging from her demeanor. So anyways, I was a bit scared and I had to just stick out under there. Nothing else for it. What kind of accent I'm doing? <laughs> now for a while I hear this loud bang. Nearly jump out my skin out of it. And a scream and a scream. I can't pronounce C words it seems. And and the scream, scream, just came out. Just came out. Hold it. When you say alarm bang, do you mean the noise of someone falling to the floor? Could, could have been, I suppose. I don't remember so well. Point is, it made me jump. And you let out a scream involuntarily. That's right, and then I felt the cushion over me head get lighter all of a sudden. Presumably when the defendant got up in order to help the victims, yes. Or not. It could equally have been the moment the accused stood in order to stab his victim, could it not? 
Well, girl, did you see what happened at that crucial moment? I think there's some contradiction over here. Yeah, I saw, I saw it, I saw it. I push up the cushion and add a quick bu uh, butcher's while at the chance. Yeah, Irishman was setting up a block where I fall on the floor on the seat opposite. <laughs> this is not caught me at all. That matches Mr. McGill's account, of course. But then the fellow suddenly turns around, turns around, and looks smart at me. I sunk back down again, but it was too late by the by then. I should never have. I should never have risked looking, 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 looking. <sighs> it's because all that as well found me. Yeah, he did help me get away, mine. Hold it! And when Mr. McGilda discovered you, he put you out of from your hiding place. I was scared stiff I was. He dragged me out and sat me down on the seat in all. Next to the victim, Mr. Mason. Yeah, the blood had a knife in his guts. He was still bleeding. Then the carriage lurched a bait and he ended up falling onto me. Ugh, how awful. Both my hands got covered in blood. It made me feel sick as a dog. Both her hands covered in blood. That must be what the rooftop passenger saw. After that, I believe you've talked with Mr. McGilded for a while. Is that correct? He asked me some stuff. Wanted me to wanted to know me name and what I was up to end that. Then I heard something from above. Someone screamed. Someone screamed. Yes. Yes. Mr. First on the roof deck. One would presume. Well, well, I didn't want no one seeing my face, so I didn't look up. Then the horses were drawn up smartish, and this here Irishman said to me, Get back up to... Get back under the seat, I'll see what you can get away later. Later. Hmm. All six, all six members of the jury had decided the defendant was innocent. One brief shining moment, yes. It's clear that they are still alright. Okay. I need to present something. Something's bothering. Something, something's bothering. So I snuck inside the carriage before they. Got the horses just like always. So always oh, I got nothing to show for me troubles that night. Now you can see a blind thing in that hiding place. Picture in there. And after a while I hear this loud bang and the jumpers here I did scream just came out. Because of that this well found me. Uh, let me check. Uh, Let me check the evidence. What what was that? Gives the cause of death's internal hemorrhage as a result of the single step from an optimum. Make up before several of the journey and other died due to internal resulting from that trauma. By an old crooked hand. Those venomous spraying at the time of the incident is busting on the right foot. I don't think this would be it. The largest knife that was found lodged in the room was polygons. Might be quite valid. Oh. Eight seats of omnibus that was the same kind. They were passenger, blah 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 blah. Nine. The other girls that was wearing the blah blah blah. Oh no, I'm, I'm stumped right now. Let me press this. Okay, let's see. do this like a uh, stone no, not doing anything not blinking at all either if there's any too happy in small talk please just feel too much <laughs> well, no. hey excuse me 
Excuse me. Is something wrong, Mr. McGilded? Oh, uh, I do apologize. Was there something in the ma uh, matter, Council? I'm just wondering if Miss Lestrade's last comment made something occur to you, perhaps? You seem to be thinking something to yourself. Oh no no, it was nothing important. I was feeling bad for the poor lass is all. I'm feeling desperate myself as a young lad. Shut up in the dark. It was terrifying so it was. I see, yes, I'm sure we all can all sympathize. I'm still scared of the dark now. Hey, and I don't know about yourself. But I find that the darkness seems to find, make everything you see uh, seem that much louder as well. Yeah, yeah. I I suppose it does. Maybe. <gasps> it's Lestrade. Did you hear something that night? Anything? An unusual what noise? Perhaps. Nah, not really. All I could hear was the Irishman snoring. Pajabras! There's no need to tell the whole world of me, you foibles, you little scamp. What a pity. If only Miss Lestrade had heard something, he might have given us a vital clue. clue. Yes. What would we make of that last statement of hers? It's profoundly important. My lord! I believe the statement just made by the witness is profoundly important. Profoundly important? But, but all she said was that she heard nothing. Yes. Which is the profoundly important point. I'm almost sure of it. Mm, I'm almost sure that I don't understand the inner workings of your Eastern mind, Council. Nevertheless, Miss Gina Lestrade, you will supplement your formal testimony by repeating that last statement, please. What supplement? What supplement? What are you on about? Don't give me all your don't give me all your fancy talk. I know what you're trying to do. Well, it won't work on me. That's right. Insult the judge. Always a good move. <laughs> yes, in a certain it is. It seems so. I was straining my ears to work out what was going on, but I could hear was snoring. Do I have something to... Uh... See what I will present with that on brother. Domnibus? Let's press this at least. Face out. Uh, not so sure. Because, yeah, at least you would hear the omnibus moving. Unless the omnibus is not moving. So you were strained to hear what was happening the entire time. Since the moment you hit yourself. Um, not exactly, no. Sorry? Well, well, there was no one in the cabin, cabin to start with. I could just push the cushion up and have a butcher to see what was what. But then when I saw this swell getting on, I got my head down so he didn't notice me. Mr. McGilda sat on the seat under which you were hiding, correct? Yeah! Would you Adam and Eve it, yay? What a morgue! So then all I could do... All could I... All I could do... All I could... I do was... Huh? So then all I could... I do was listen... Yeah, it is wrong grammatically, I think. I was waiting to jump out of the as soon as soon as I heard him leave, see? Wait, not likely. Even though we stopped here and there, I never heard the door open. 
I just add the steady boot and listen to him driving. Speaks to market, snoring like an old dog he was. Hmm, are there any conclusions we can draw from that? I wonder. It doesn't add up. Miss Lestrade, what you have just told the court is clear at odds with the facts. Ah! Edward, are, are you sure, man? Absolutely. It seems my learned Nipponese friend is not as dull witted as I feared. So Van Six realized it too. Counsel, I must insist that you bolster your claim with evidence. For some complicit party's name at the very least. Yes, my lord. I expect you demonstrate its alleged contradiction to the court. According to Miss Lestrade, while she was hiding in the omnibus at night, she heard nothing but the sound of Mr. McGilded snoring. But think, Brianosuke, think. There's something else she should have heard. A person. Very well, my lord. Allow me to elaborate. On a particular sound that Miss Lestrade could not have failed to hear on the night in question. Sound very clearly explained by the presence of the following person. This guy, right? Yes, correct. Try fire it, thrice fire it, Mason. Yes, my lord, the sound that Miss Lestrade cannot have failed to hear is that of the victim, Mr. Mason, boarding the omnibus. Okay. And well, I was not thinking about that. <laughs> but she said absolutely nothing. I guess it was literally. She was listening she she was hearing the carriage moving as well oh door oh door explain your reasoning counsel miss lestrade allow me to confirm something you claimed earlier that you were the first person on board the omnibus is that correct yeah of course i was i got on while while the driver was in the pub didn't i and the next person to board the omnibus was mr mcgilded there it was, sir. There it was. Not a soul was in the cabin when I climbed aboard. At least not in plain sight. So we were, to all intents and purposes, alone in the enclosed cabin of the omnibus at that time. Did, did I not say as yes much? I wasn't travelling with anyone else, if that's what you mean. Yeah, I saw him get on, remember? Through the crack on the sick cushion. He was on his own for sure. And from what we've heard, the carriage made a number of stops after that on its onward journey, during which time you did not hear the door opening or closing at all. Nah, I never heard it. That's exactly what I was listening for, weren't it? Waiting for this swell to leave. In which case, and then how did the victim end up in the carriage? <gasps> oh! We know that the victim collapsed inside the enclosed cabin of the omnibus. Therefore, Miss Lestrade's statement about what she did or did not hear is at odds with the facts. Ah! Yes, this petty thief's statement was clearly flawed. Lord Von Zix. Yes, he knew. He knew all too well that there was an inconsistency in Miss Lestrade's statement. <laughs> it would seem words of thanks are in order for my learned friend. What are you talking about? Huh? Honey, you have demonstrated matters impeccably. This witness and her colorful statements are entirely unreliable, 
a world's inconvenient untruths, nothing more. Instead, we'll run to your home. Can you look at me? Victim, I'm so happy. Better than all of you. If I make my brother say the word, that's all in this. I'm going to approach that. That's all for me. Guilty. Ah, she, she didn't even say anything. I didn't want to judge the little girl. My just because she has some rather naughty ways. But I must say... I can't abide liars. <laughs> I neither, I neither can I. Mr. Foreman. I do not want to judge the girl just because she has some less sublibrious ways. But I must say, I can abide liars. Mr. Naruto, that's five jury members leaning towards guilty. Well, your consideration for others is refreshing, my Nipponese friend. To the considerable troubles you have spared me. <sighs> yes, very refreshing. You playing it? Have you forgotten who you're working for, you useless Eastern Mammoth? This is carnage, it's perfect. <laughs> Your number two is the only one left. It's Naruto, the way this is going. I know. We can find some new way to convince everyone of Mr. McGilda's innocence. The just will rule, and we'll never will have lost. We're lost. I very much wanted to believe the words of one of London's most respected gentlemen, but those of us in service know we must accept our truths. Hold it! Yes, the witness last statement seems to have revealed a critical inconsistency in her story. However, if we consider the possibility that her statement is in fact the truth, it may shed an entirely new light on this whole case. What are you saying? Conceal! Top of the body! Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. What do we, whatever do you mean? Counsel. I will not tolerate you attempting to parole my adjudication. Explain yourself at once. When the queue boarded the omnibus on the night in question, the victim was nowhere to be seen. Subsequently, the carriage door was not heard opening a single time, as testified by the witness in the stand. And yet, the victim's body was found inside the carriage. If this petty thief's words are to be believed, how do you explain the victim's miraculous appearance inside the cabin of the omnibus? Ah. There's only one way to explain how the victim came to be inside the carriage. He was in there already. Clearly he was in there already before beforehand. Tell me, my learned friend, what was the function of that clearly in your last sentence? Hmm? Well said, Lord Back Six. The clearly is troubling me also. No, no, that's really not the point. The point is that the victim must have been in the carriage from beforehand. Then answer me this, by beforehand, to what specific point in time are you referring? 
Well, clearly, um, I shall have to penalize the defense heavily for this irrelevant rambling. Ah, oh, god damn it! I must learn to ramble more irrelevantly. The penalty is evidently not heavy enough, judging from the Nippon's size. So I ask you again: If it is blah blah blah, blah 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 blah, okay, 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 okay. I guess I have two more. There's another entrance. He was put there after he died. Objection. I feel like it's the wrong question as well. Ah, bloody hell. Okay, well, never mind. How could a cadaver have been placed in that moving carriage? Okay, 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 I know I'm dumb. I made my mistakes. Ah, uh, okay. Alright, uh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Oh no, I'm. Okay, uh, we are out of time, actually, so I'll fix this uh, in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching, uh, hope you enjoyed this playthrough, and uh, hope this... I will get it done, I will get it done, alright? So take care, stay hopeful, but be critical, alright? Bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.